I better be your favorite. You are. Then he went down to the jailhouse, and what did he say? Patti Loveless was among the greatest names in the genre of country music. But suddenly, she stopped performing altogether. What really happened to her? Stick around, and you'll see. Early life. Patti Loveless was born with the name of Patricia Lee Ramey on January 4, 1957, in Pikeville, Kentucky. Her parents were Naomi and John Ramey, with whom she grew up in Elkhorn City, Kentucky. That's where her dad worked in a coal mine, but soon he ended up with black lung disease, so they had to move to Louisville for his treatment. Patty had some pretty cool family connections right from the start, as she's a distant cousin of country legends Loretta Lynn and Crystal Gale. Music was in Patty's blood from a young age. At just 11 years old, she started playing the guitar and writing songs with her brother Roger. They even performed together at local gigs, which eventually caught the eye of the Wilburn brothers. Those guys saw potential but thought she needed more time, so they encouraged her to keep polishing her craft. After high school, Patty hit the road with the Wilburn brothers as a vocalist in their band. In the late 70s, Patty was rocking out to cover songs in the Midwestern United States, but she had her sights set on Nashville. Inspired by the neo-traditional country wave, she moved back to Music City in the mid-80s. Artists like Dwight Yoakam, The Judds, and Randy Travis all encouraged her to pursue her country music dreams. Once in Nashville, Patty worked harder than you can imagine. She sang demo recordings for other artists and got herself a songwriting deal with Acuff Rose Music in 1985. After this, she went on to record five of her own songs on a demo tape, which her brother Roger sent to Music Corporation of America Records' Nashville division. The most astonishing thing happened after this. Tony Brown, a bigwig at Music Corporation of America, liked what he heard and signed Patty to the label in July 1985, and this became her first big break. Patty and the Music Corporation of America. Loveless truly began her recording career with Music Corporation of America, but she couldn't have done any of it without getting some help from big names like Tony Brown and Emery Gordy Jr., who was part of Emmy Lou Harris's band before. Her debut single, Lonely Days, Lonely Nights, came out in late 1985, followed by a few others like Wicked Ways, I Did, and After All. However, the disappointing thing about these songs was that none of these singles made it big on the charts. The people at Music Corporation of America were skeptical about releasing an album because of these setbacks, but Patty had a plan. She knew that I Did was a hit with fans, so she pushed for the album's release, and eventually, she got her way. In 1986, Patty Loveless's self-titled album was released. Emery Gordy Jr. and Tony Brown were in charge of production, and they brought in some ace musicians like Reggie Young and Richard Bennett to jam with Patty. They also had some pretty competent people on the songwriting team, including Guy Clark, Joel Sonnier, and Karen Staley. Interestingly, Patty wrote I Did Herself when she was just 17, and it's the only song she's ever written for her own albums. Then there's After All, which was originally meant for Reba McIntyre, but when Reba passed, Patty got to sing it. To promote her debut album, Patty was on the road with none other than George Jones. They even sang Roll in My Sweet Baby's Arms together during their performances. Plus, reviewers were pretty impressed too. Cashbox gave Lonely Days, Lonely Nights a thumbs up and called it a boot tapper that showed off Patty's killer voice. Everybody could tell that I Did came straight from the heart with that classic country sound that everybody loves. However, behind the scenes, things were getting tough for Patty. She went through a tough divorce from her first husband, Terry, and it was a challenging period for her, but she kept pushing forward in her music career. Her second album with Music Corporation of America came out in 1988, and it was called If My Heart Had Windows. The first single, You Saved Me, didn't quite hit the top 40 on the country charts, but then came an absolute banger. A cover of George Jones's, but she kept pushing forward in her music career. And earned Loveless her first top 10 hit. After that, she also covered Steve Earle's A Little Bit in Love, and it climbed up the charts almost instantly. By the middle of 1988, Patty was sitting pretty at number two on the Billboard country charts. 
Critics loved it too. Tom Jurek from All Music was all praises for Patty's renditions, calling her voice stunning and her recordings top-notch. However, not everyone was sold. Jack Hurst from the Chicago Tribune thought the production leaned a bit too much towards country pop. Around the same time, Patty scored a big win as she was inducted into the Grand Ole Opry. Meanwhile, she wasn't just making waves in the United States. Patty crossed the pond to the United Kingdom and rocked the stage at Wembley Arena during their annual country music festival. Then, in late 1988, Patty came out with her third album titled Honky Tonk Angel. Interestingly, shortly after its release, she got married to Emery Gordy Jr. The lead single, Blue Side of Town, was a hit, and so was her cover of Lone Justice's Don't Toss Us Away. At the time, the real star of the show was Timber, I'm Falling in Love, which went on to become her first number one single. However, this song was yet to achieve more. Tony Brown, the record producer, stumbled upon Timber, I'm Falling in Love while looking for songs for the album. It was written by Costas, a Greek-American songwriter who wasn't even thinking about breaking into the country scene at the time. Thanks to Patty's success with the song, Costas started writing more hits for her and other country artists. The Lonely Side of Love, which was another Costas creation, landed in the country music top 10 by late 1989. In early 1990, the album's final single, Chains, topped the charts, making it Patty's second number one hit. The Music Corporation of America pulled out all the stops to promote the album. They teamed up with Country Music Television for an amazing promo, including a chance for fans to win a trip to see Patty perform live at Billy Bob's Texas, a nightclub in Fort Worth. Plus, they hooked Patty up with an endorsement deal with Justin Boots. The hard work paid off massively because Honky Tonk Angel went platinum, selling over a million copies. Critics hailed it as the album that confirmed Patti Loveless's place as a major player in the country scene. Wendy Dudley from the Calgary Herald couldn't get enough of Patti's vocals, even comparing her to Patsy Cline. Then, in 1990, Loveless dropped her fourth studio album titled On Down the Line. It was a big hit, especially the title track, which climbed to the top five on the charts. Interestingly, that one was written by Costas, the same guy behind some of Patty's other hits. Then Patty covered Lucinda Williams' The Night's Too Long, which also made some noise on the charts, hitting number 20. The album had more gems too, like I'm That Kind of Girl in Blue Memories, written by Matrika Berg and Karen Brooks. Both of these tracks found their way onto the charts in early 1991. On Down the Line did so well that it got a gold certification for selling over 500,000 copies and critics were raving about it too. Alex Henderson from All Music called it unpredictable and consistently inspired and named it one of Patty's best albums. Plus, Jack Hurst said Patty's vocals finally found their match in the soulful tunes of this collection. However, Patty wasn't done yet. In 1991, she wrapped up her time with Music Corporation of America with Up Against My Heart. The lead single, Hurt Me Bad in a Real Good Way, went up to find its place in the top five, and it even featured backing vocals from Deborah Allen. Plus, Patty had some big names like Dolly Parton, Mac McAnally, and Vince Gill lending their voices on a few tracks. The album closed out with a cover of Lyle Lovett's God Will. While follow-up singles like Jealous Bone and Can't Stop Myself from Loving You didn't quite hit the same heights on the charts, the album still earned high praise. Finally, in 1992, Patty decided to part ways with Music Corporation of America and even let go of her brother Roger, who had been managing her career. Her final release with Music Corporation of America was a greatest hits album in 1993, and even that went gold. However, after leaving Music Corporation of America, Patty moved on to the most successful days of her life. Patty moves to Epic Records. Patty began working with Epic Records in late 1992, but before she could start recording, she hit a bump in the road. Turns out, she was diagnosed with an aneurysm on one of her vocal cords, probably from all those years of touring. She had to undergo surgery to get it removed in October 1992. After that, she needed about a month of vocal rest and therapy before she could start singing again. 
One would think that she was discouraged by the setback, but she came back stronger than ever. Her debut album with Epic Records' Only What I Feel was a big deal. The album had some pretty big names behind it, with Emery Gordy Jr. producing and playing bass guitar. Vince Gill and Joe Diffie lent their voices for backing vocals, and there were some massively talented musicians like Barry Beckett and Paul Franklin in the mix too. Patty's first single with Epic was Blame It On Your Heart, a catchy tune co-written by Costas and Harlan Howard. Eventually, it became her third number one single on Billboard in mid-1993. However, Patty wasn't done just yet. Only What I Feel churned out three more singles by 1994, including Nothing But The Wheel, You Will, and How Can I Help You Say Goodbye. Both You Will and How Can I Help You Say Goodbye made it into the top 10 on the Billboard country charts. Interestingly, You Will was actually co-written by Pam Rose and Marianne Kennedy, who were part of the country duo Kennedy Rose. Plus, Anne Murray originally recorded it back in 1991. How Can I Help You Say Goodbye also had an interesting backstory, as actor Burton Collins got the idea for the song after his grandma passed away in 1988. However, he didn't finish it until later when he teamed up with co-writer Karen Taylor Good. In the end, critics loved Patty's comeback too. Alana Nash from Entertainment Weekly said Patty's vocals sounded even stronger after her surgery. Michael McCall from All Music also thought Patty's voice was on fire, especially on tracks like Nothing But The Wheel. To top it off, Patty scored her first Grammy nomination from the 37th Grammy Awards in 1995. Her song How Can I Help You Say Goodbye was up for Best Female Country Vocal Performance. After that, Patty's second album with Epic dropped in 1994 and was called When Fallen Angels Fly. The lead single, I Try to Think About Elvis, hit number three on the country charts that same year. Beyond that, the album also churned out some other hits like Here I Am, You Don't Even Know Who I Am, and Halfway Down, all of which made it into the top ten. Astonishingly, When Fallen Angels Fly snagged Album of the Year at the Country Music Association Awards. It wasn't even originally in the running, but it got added after another album got disqualified. Patty also got the Top Female Vocalist Award from the Academy of Country Music in both 1995 and 1996. One of the tracks, You Don't Even Know Who I Am, was actually up for Song of the Year at both the Academy of Country Music and the Grammy Awards. So nobody was surprised when When Fallen Angels Fly went platinum. Critics loved it too as Bob Cannon from Entertainment Weekly praised Patty's emotional range on the album. By the time 1996 rolled around, Epic Records dropped her eighth studio album, The Trouble with the Truth. The lead single, You Can Feel Bad, shot straight to number one on Billboard's country chart. Patty kept the hits coming with A Thousand Times a Day, Lonely Too Long, and She Drew a Broken Heart. She described the album as being all about seeing things as they are, not how you wish they'd be, and it got some serious recognition too. Both the Academy of Country Music and the Country Music Association nominated it for Album of the Year, and it even snagged two Grammy nominations, one for Best Country Album and another for Best Female Country Vocal Performance. By 1998, the trouble with the truth had gone platinum. Patty even threw in a cover of Richard Thompson's tear-stained letter on the album. While some critics weren't sold on that track, they couldn't deny Patty's ability to blend contemporary and traditional sounds. Plus, Lonely Too Long got some love too, with Billboard praising Patty's emotional delivery. Overall, critics were singing Patty's praises, with one from Country Standard Time hailing her ability to really dig into the emotional core of each song. In late 1997, Loveless hit the top 20 of the country charts with a duet with George Jones called You Don't Seem to Miss Me. That song was the lead single to her ninth album, Long Stretch of Lonesome, and that album was absolutely packed with hits. To Have You Back Again in High on Love, which was co-written by Costas, also made it into the top 20 from this album. However, not every song hit the mark. Like Water Into Wine was her first solo single since 1987 to miss the country top 40. Still, you don't seem to miss me one vocal event of the year from the Country Music Association in 1998 and even got nominated for Best Country Collaboration with Vocals at the 40th Annual Grammy Awards. Patty collaborated with some pretty famous people on this album, including Costas, Kim Ritchie, Jim Lauderdale, and Jeff Hanna, 
from the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Critics were all over it, too. Carol L. Phillips from the Cincinnati Post gave the album an A rating, highlighting how it blended bluegrass and rock influences. Then came a big achievement in the shape of the gold certification of Long Stretch of Lonesome in 1998. However, Patty's appetite was far from gone. In the same year, she teamed up with other artists for Same Old Train, which was included in a tribute album called A Tribute to Tradition. That song got massively famous on Hot Country Songs and bagged Patty her first Grammy Award for Best Country Collaboration with Vocals. Her next move was a compilation titled Classics, which came out in 1999. This album was a mix of nine singles from her previous epic albums, along with three new tracks. Two of those tracks, including Can't Get Enough and a duet with Vince Gill called My Kind of Woman, My Kind of Man, were even released as singles. In the end, that duet with Vince Gill was praised all over the world. Patty and Vince had teamed up before on some killer tracks, as she'd lent her vocals to his singles like When I Call Your Name, Pocket Full of Gold, and Go Rest High on That Mountain. Their collaboration on My Kind of Woman, My Kind of Man, even nabbed them the Country Music Association Award for Vocal Event of the Year. Critics were practically obsessed with classics, too, praising the consistency of Patty's previous hits. However, some thought that Can't Get Enough fell a bit short compared to the others. Still, classics earned its stripes, going gold in 2002. After all of this, anyone would be tired, and understandably, Patty had to take a bit of a break toward the end of the 90s. On top of that, she caught pneumonia, and her producer, Gordy, had to undergo emergency surgery for pancreatitis. Despite the hiatus, Patty still found time to lend her backing vocals to Tim McGraw's number one single, Please Remember Me, in late 1999. Her later career. Loveless made a comeback in 2000 with her studio project called Strong Heart, all while she was on a mission to find songs that would resonate with young adults. Steve Earle even jumped in on the action, adding a harmonica part to the track, You're So Cool. The album birthed two top 20 country singles, which included That's the Kind of Mood I'm In and The Last Thing on My Mind. However, despite these chart successes, the album didn't quite hit the commercial jackpot. After this, between 2001 and 2002, Patty came out with a couple of bluegrass albums that really shook things up. The first one was Mountain Soul, which was a mix of original tunes and covers. Patty had been itching to do an acoustic bluegrass album ever since she met Ralph Stanley back in 1992, and with the rise of bluegrass-influenced hits like the O Brother, Where Art Thou soundtrack and Nickel Creek's work, Epic Records gave her the green light. Mountain Soul featured guest appearances from legends like Earl Scruggs and Ricky Skaggs. Patty put her own spin on songs by Porter Wagoner, Dolly Parton, and Daryl Scott. Plus, she even covered one of her producer's tracks, Cheap Whiskey, which was previously sung by Martina McBride. The crooner dropped Out of Control Raging Fire, a duet with Travis Tritt, as a single and music video in late 2001. The album got a thumbs up from Eli Messenger at Country Standard Time, who called it the most emotion-drenched and uncompromisingly powerful album of her career. Mountain Soul even got a Grammy nomination for Best Bluegrass Album, a couple of tracks from the album titled the Boys Are Back in Town and You'll Never Leave Harlan Alive got nods for Song of the Year at the 2002 International Bluegrass Music Awards. Then came 2002, and Patty dropped a Christmas bluegrass album called Bluegrass and White Snow, A Mountain Christmas. It was filled with traditional Christmas covers like Silent Night and Away in a Manger. Patty teamed up with John Randall for Joy to the World and Carolyn Dawn Johnson for The Little Drummer Boy. Plus, of course, her producer Gordy wrote the title track and two other original songs for the album. So after a bit of a break, Patti Loveless came back in 2003 with her album On Your Way Home. She mentioned later that she and Emery Gordy wanted to blend the classic bluegrass vibes of Mountain Soul with some more modern sounds, like drums and electric guitar. The first single off the album was a cover of Rodney Crowell's Lovin' All Night. It did pretty well and became Patti's last top 20 hit. The title track and I Wanna Believe also made it onto the charts, although they were her last chart entries overall. 
Patty got some well-deserved recognition for the album and snagged nominations for Female Vocalist of the Year from both the Academy of Country Music and the Country Music Association. Plus, the title track got a Grammy nod for Best Female Country Vocal Performance. In 2004, Patty lent her voice to Alan Jackson's single Monday Morning Church and even performed with him at the Country Music Association Awards ceremony that year. Then, in 2005, Patty dropped Dream In My Dreams, her last album with Epic before they shut down their Nashville branch. Emery Gordy and Justin Niebank teamed up to produce this one, with some help from musicians like Leroy Parnell, John Randall, and Emmylou Harris. The album included covers of Waylon Jennings' Dreaming My Dreams With You, Richard Thompson's Keep Your Distance, and Steve Earle's My Old Friend The Blues. Plus, there was also a duet with Dwight Yoakam on Delaney Bramlett's never-ending Song of Love. The only single from the album was the cover of Keep Your Distance. Brian Wallert from Country Standard Time felt that Patty and Gordy did an amazing job at finding the exact songs that captured everyday life in the most human way possible. At the News and Observer, Jack Bernhardt thought this album was Patty's strongest yet, praising the storytelling feel of the songs and comparing Patty's vocals to Patsy Cline's. Then, in 2006, Patty Loveless teamed up with rock singer Bob Seeger on his album, Face the Promise. She sang a duet with him on a track called The Answers in the Question. Turns out, Seeger's audio engineer, David N. Cole, thought the song would work best as a duet and suggested Patty. Seeger wasn't sure if Patty would be up for it, but they both turned out to be fans of each other's music, so they made it happen. After that, Patty took a bit of a break from recording. During her break, Epic, the label she was with, closed its Nashville branch. Plus, she had some personal stuff going on, because both her mom and her mother-in-law passed away, and her brother Roger had a stroke. Later on, a lot of people thought that this series of events eventually led to Patty's downfall, the end of Patty's career. At first, Patty came back strong in 2008 with Sleepless Nights, which was released on Saguaro Road Records. In an interview with Country Music Television, Patty mentioned that she decided to do a covers album dedicated to her brother Roger and her sister Dottie, who passed away in 1996. Emery Gordy, her husband, produced the album and played bass on it. They had some other talented folks pitch in, like pianist Hargis Pig Robbins and guitarist Al Perkins. The album was a mix of covers from artists like the Everly Brothers, George Jones, Porter Wagoner, and Webb Pierce. The lead single was a cover of George Jones's Why Baby Why. Critics liked Patty's take on the songs, calling her vocals interpretive and praising the emotional depth of the tracks. At the 51st Annual Grammy Awards, Sleepless Nights was nominated for Best Country Album, and Patty's collaboration with George Strait on House of Cash got a nod for Best Country Collaboration with Vocals. A year later, Patty came out with Mountain Soul 2 a sequel to her original Mountain Soul project. This album had that same mix of acoustic and bluegrass vibes, with guest vocals from folks like Vince Gill, Del McCoury, and Emmylou Harris. Patty even covered one of Emmylou's songs, Diamond in My Crown. Plus, she threw in some traditional Christian tunes too, like Children of Abraham, in which she sang a cappella. Turns out, Patty was no stranger to Christian music. She'd sung Amazing Grace with Ralph Stanley and Emmylou Harris while they were on tour together. The lead single from Mountain Soul 2 was a cover of Harlan Howard's Busted. Critics liked some of the tracks, but felt the album didn't quite have the same focus as the first Mountain Soul. By the time 2009 rolled around, Patty had almost completely retired from performing, but she was still making music in different ways. She lent her vocals to Miranda Lambert's Track Deer Diamond on her 2010 album For the Record. That same year, she teamed up with the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing for a program called Drive, raising awareness about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease after her sister Dottie passed away from it. She also popped up on albums by artists like Angelina Presley, Elizabeth Cook, Trisha Yearwood, and Carly Pierce. In October 2022, Patty was one of the performers at Kentucky Rising, a concert raising funds for flood victims in Kentucky. The lineup was stacked with names like Chris Stapleton, Dwight Yoakam, Ricky Skaggs, and Tyler Childers. 
A month later, she and Chris Stapleton took the stage together at the 56th Annual Country Music Association Awards to perform You'll Never Leave Harlan Alive, 